G'day punters, welcome to the Mailbag, previewing a PV Lawrence Stakes Day at Caulfield. Big card, big ponies. Uh, we're going to try and find a few bets for you. Difficult meeting to sort of find bets at, but a really exciting uh, meeting to look at as the racing really starts to heat up there in in Victoria. Uh, we're joined by the man, the myth, the wish, the alien, a bit more believer, here. A Jonathan, Jonathan Walsh, who fittingly is wearing a Bass Pro Shops uh Looks like a six or eight year old t shirt. Might have pinched that off senior looking at how loose it is on you. Uh, is that due to the fact that you have to take me on a chartered fishing trip when when we're allowed to? No, it's it's just my uniform that, that I've been, you know, <laughs> been wearing in this lockdown. It's just what's in what's in the drawer. And it's, it's a bit warmer in the office today with the sun coming in. So, so did you take the Ugg boots off? Uh, I took the Ugg boots off because I had to go down to get some essential service this morning, so I haven't had the Ugg boots on. I got my, I got my uh, grouse new pair of Nike Air Max 90. <laughs> I saw these. I saw these. Can you please put these up on Twitter for the punter at home? This is, is this the first – do you think this is the first sort of step for you into a midlife crisis? Uh, oh, look like, at them. I couldn't buy them when I was 16, and, you know, as I think I spoke to you, they're like um, – you can design them on mine. It wasn't much difference. Uh, <laughs> Jonesy told me. Jonesy showed me. <laughs> <laughs> the grouse. Have they got... Like, my mail is that you've got a little, like, uh, you've had it, like, embroidered with a little JW on it. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> right. Just in case you lose them at the at the pools or something, is it? Just in case I see some someone walking around the streets of Hyatt with my shoes on, I go, "Hey, hear me shoes, you bastard!" <laughs> so, <laughs> of... <sighs> All right, <clears throat> Caulfield. The rail's out nine meters. Um, last time the rail's out nine meters, it was a mad highway. Uh, that was wet that day, Peter, wasn't it? Yeah, last time it was a wet day. Rail nine meters. You basically had to be leading, so. We'll wait and see what happens there on Saturday. There's rain forecast today, tomorrow and Saturday. So it's one of those. Just adjust as the day progresses, I guess. I think as a, as a starting position for the show, we need to sort of definitely not be against anything that's better than midfield and sort of really want to love something that needs to make ground. Just off what we've seen recently with this rail position and that weather pattern. Uh, the team's flying. I... I reckon I did my best performance of all time yesterday, and Gloria Estefan here, Pistol Pete Anthonis, just had to one-up me, the sneaky little fuck. Uh, both been due for a big day, and we both got it. Two 30-to-1 winners for Pistol. Just how many bets do you have there at Belmont? Three? Yeah, I th- think I bet into three races or something. It's pretty, two pretty low 30, spend. Two at 30-to-1. So, look, Pistol's found his, found his form big time. Uh, head to the mailbag.com.au, get on the gropers. Which again is not a reference to anything in untoward. It's a reference to Western Australia. Uh, but Pete's flying. Walshie, how you been seeing him? Yeah, yeah, we survived. And as I said, we got the mailbag stimulus package yesterday, didn't we? So uh, <laughs> there's something there. There's something there. <laughs> I think it'll say we're going to uh, wrap each other up. Big, um, big. Nick Noonan's fucking flying. Yep, airborne. Uh, Nick Noonan's trial stuff. So, you, if you get if you head to the mailbag, you'll see it. Um, you get what you get is a is a preview of anything that's trialed or trialed or jumped out leading into the, the midweek and the Saturday meeting. Um, and he'll rank him and he for, mainly for Peter and I who are a little bit simple. We like them coloured. So if you see blue, you generally bet. Green's okay. Orange and red, you avoid. His last. So for the last month, he sent 10 blue trialers at an average price of $9.80 for five winners. Five from 10 at $9.80. It's, it's fucking unbelievable. Uh, I see. Get it while you can. He'll be on .com before you know it. Um, but, yeah, Nick Nurn stuff flying. Go and try it out. We're going to preview the quality legs at Caulfield, but we're also going to look at race five because it's a group race and it's a good race and it. I reckon it might be the better race on the day. Walsh, you've had a look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy to bet here. I believe rulership will get the complete run of the race. Its trial was was good. It comes out of the top form race that's coming in. It should get an easy lead. 
Um, Hydro Star was a big win at Sandown, but at Sandown, and we'll get back in the field. Just rulership gets the map as the class, and I thought it should have started, should be favourite in the race. Oh, I can't believe Hydro Star's favourite. Um, I've got it sort of sneaking back to last, which which we've spoken about already. It's not ideal. Um, I thought the the one that might improve, which is really good at Mooney Valley, was the Cruiser. If they show some intent, and it, it could settle sort of 1-1 one, one here from a better draw, uh, it was really strong through the line there on at the Valley. There's a, there's a horse that comes out of that race, which is racing today at sale, which we've backed. Um, so that'll be another sort of guide to how strong that form line is. A bunch of them first up. I'm always sort of happy to be against the, the really good two-year-olds as they become three-year-olds. Rulership, however, I think was slaughtered more times than not as a two-year-old. We saw a parade, Peter. It's a really, it was a beast then, mm. which is a bit of a chink for me now. Like it may well still be the beast, but it had a, it had a physical edge on the, on the other horses, the way we read horses. Uh, I, I've backed ranting here, number five. Um, I think we sort of took, was it $7? Um, I like the setup. I like the map. I like that rulership's in the race, and there's not a lot of speed, so he has to just make sure he gets that spot. I think he'll sit outside rulership. I think he get every possible. That's ranting. It's not as stable I love, but uh, at the price, I think it's a really good bet. Peter? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy just to try and sit around this race. Uh, I think rulership's trial was, was good enough. There was that nice little gap to second, gap to third there. Just looked like a pretty strong trial. I'm not totally enamoured with either rulership or ranting's jockey choice uh, for horses that are going to be sitting on speed. Dunn and Lane, I mean, they're not necessarily the most aggressive jocks of all time. So depending on how the track's playing, if there's any advantage to sitting off speed, I think off speed horses will get every chance here because I can't imagine them going too quick up front. So that's probably the main issue for me. I'll just be watching. I suppose that that's a big problem with Caulfield, isn't it? Like the last sort of year. Yeah. Is what you've just said and articulated makes great sense, but you can't bet off that yet because you don't know if they're going to be able to run on. Yep. Race six, 1,100 metres. This is a really hot race. Uh, Parlophone dominates the market off a very big win at Morfittville. That uh, was ridden by Jess Eden, ridden well, but now she's replaced by D. Oliver, who's riding out of his skin, which is hard to believe. But he's flying. The horse's form's outstanding. There's the map and synth hold. Volchi? Yeah, well, on first look, you go, geez, Parlophone was huge at Morfittville. Um, and you think with a clear run, yeah, it's definitely going to be close to the uh, to winning. But we're at Caulfield, rail nine metres. It's a real query. Uh, horse called Fresh obviously has some ability coming through good form races and that sort of thing. There's some, there's some queries in the race. I, just, I wouldn't be diving in. Parlophone could win, win by length or it could... Would get caught back. Just yeah, Parlophone's the seat of the race, but it's not a race that I could be. I can't back it at, at the moment at two dollars forty from where it's going to get back to in the map and at Caulfield. Um, you know, there's as I said, fresh, the hay sauce, REF. There's, there's heaps of heaps of unknowns here. Yeah, I'm just going to sit back and, and watch. Pistol. Yeah. Uh... I tend to agree. I'm not sure Parlophone's a, a lay by any stretch, but I was happy to just have something small on River Knight uh, from Gate 1. I thought that horse at the current price, I think it's got pretty reasonable form actually coming into this race, and it's got some good figures at the track. So around that $16 mark, uh, it settles on speed. I think that's probably the horse that you can bet now. Um, I can too is an interesting horse coming out of that race at Warrnambool. Um it was a good figure for that track, but the map's pretty horrendous here. I think it will probably be last or near last. So that's the, the concern with that galloper. And I guess a horse like Fresh, I've got time for, but again, I'm not necessarily sure if we wound up first up. That would be a classic mounting yard horse for me. So River Knight's the only bet at the moment in this race. Yeah, this really is a day that hurts to not like, be able to go because this is just like... Especially after the form that we've just hit, this would be the best day ever to be on track for. But anyway, we're not. Uh, number eleven CRS. We back last start and should have won. Jcar slaughtered it at Mooney Valley. I don't think Ben Allen's going to do any better from Barrier Thirteen though. The horse sort of lacked early speed there at the Valley. There's more horses here. There's some good on pace horses here, so I don't think they try and roll forward. 
Therefore, they end up three wide cover or they snick even harder to last. You don't want to be slowing down horses here. Uh, I'm with Pete. I think River Knight is the strongest sort of betting play if you wanted to. I don't want to bet yet. I want to see how the track plays. This horse will be rails and run. Might be one pair back the fence. Might be three pairs back the fence and sort of buried. Uh, I, I like the Ellison Zara stable. I think they're flying. Uh, I think Ellison Zara horse is fresh or a tick. Uh, but there's just so many questions, Mark. So like, Aqua Girl might improve. It probably finds the fence uh, fresh. The SP profile and fresh is outstanding. Miss Bassetti's half flying, but doesn't have a lot of form. But you can make excuses almost everywhere it's run. And Parlophone, yeah, super, but just needs to beat what I fear might be a bit of a bias in this track. So um, if they've run on and the track's opened up and they're getting off the fence, I'd be avoiding River Knight and looking towards CRS at the big odds, but really scared of Parlophone as a big jockey switch. Caulfield, first leg of the quaddy. Uh, Mick Price, Parlophone, the speed should be on. He was just going to leave it up to Ollie. It should settle back. It was the pick of the two Mick Price runners. With Euphoric Summer, there was going to be a bit of a change this week. He was going to get out of the gates, show intent and go forward. It had been settling back, but Mick did say this morning that it will go forward. Um, tongue tie on. Um, for the first leg of the quaddy, I was keen on fresh. It's had three jump outs in preparation for this. And at the $7, I thought it was the best each way player of the day. Race number seven, boys, is over. The 1,200 metres, Jungle Edge, Viridine, Age of Chivalry and Bumper Blast, etc. Regevic here, Pete. First, uh, it's first up this prep, Uncle Lindsay, 1,200 metres. It was nommed and scratched last week in the Home of the Brave race. We were confused with it over 1,200 metres there. I am uh, just as confused here now. Um, it's peak figures over a mile. What are you doing with it? Um, I was happy to, to let it go around. If you got out to say like a $40 mark on the fair late, I'll have something small because it does have a previous figure here at Caulfield and it does have a figure in the wet. So don't necessarily want to be you know, really hard against it, but it's a pretty iffy looking race for me. Um, what Bumper Blast did first up was was very impressive. I'm, I'm a bit wary of the fact that it was a huge PB first up. Sometimes you see those horses just sort of pop next start and don't quite get back to that level for the prep but geez it looked like for all money like it was going to be lapping up 1200 um the horse i thought that actually had pretty good form first up last prep and is at huge odds is shahitsi um i want to have something small in that galloper from the from the gate of three jungle edge yeah if it gets to a heavy eight nine underwater obviously it comes into it but we saw what the market did with it last start and now it's got a real weak sp against viridane but would need a very heavy track to be figuring wishy uh if i don't think be good to your mother is wound up uh from just the reports i've heard but it was the first horse i i went to because it gets the perfect map and and had has the ability Go close, so but um, report reports are it will need to run, which is disappointing because then I could have you know tried to work up on the race. Age of Chivalry, you seem to find this horse all the time. Dicko draws the pole position, um, gets a good run, it should it, it, it'll go all right, but once again, I, I, I don't think it's a I don't think it's quite there as a, as a proper group horse. Bumper blast. Well, it's an acid, acid test today, but it's a poor map. This is just a really hard race with the map and the first up. Yeah, it, 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 I find it very difficult. Viridine doesn't get a good map either. It's favourite. Yeah, Jungle Edge is just Jungle Edge of Wade. Jungle Edge, Jungle Ruler. If you combine the amount of money that I've locked on those horses, because that, that was a horse, of Jungle Ruler, the grey horse that won at Waterville one year last race in the wet, won like. 20 races or something. Jungle Edge has won 20 races. So <laughs> if you combine my, my losses on races those horses have won, I'd um, I'd be living in, in Turak on St George's Road or whatever it is, or, or Shakespeare, Toby, Hawthorne sort of thing. And you wouldn't get getting tested? Beg your pardon? And you wouldn't have to get tested. 
Yes, for what? The COVID. What do you mean by that? Don't you think they have the green the green light or something? No. Don't they have the green light? <laughs> I don't know what you're on about. I don't know. I don't know what conspiracy theories you. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up with which ones you're you're sticking with or which ones you're just talking about. Anyway, so that one that one we put to bed. Everyone's getting tested. Okay. I I think this race is like a it's like a game of footy. I look forward to watching it. But how how can you pretend to bet in this race? Yeah, yeah. Age of Chivalry is a beast, and I think can keep improving. Jungle Edge, if it keeps raining, will, will shorten and probably look like it's going to win for a fair way. Be good to your mother, SP, $7 or $6 versus Scales of Justice and another stack of great horses first up in a group two last prayer. This is softer than that. It'll get every possible if they ride it with intent. Uh, Tahitsi, I agree. He's got some ability. I think this is above it, but God knows. Uncle Lindsay and Rechevik's is scary behaviour. Viridine looks like it's airborne. I don't like Zara replacing Oliver from Barrier 2. This needs to be aggressively ridden. It's just sort of wind up. He took too long to get going on the first time. Then last prep, Ollie gave it a peach. Um, I think Bumper Blast, I think the other way to you, Pete. I, I thought it, I actually watched the parade on the TV and it looked like it would improve to me. This horse could be the, the sort of one here that, that's got the, the, the most scope. But fucking hell, haven't they priced it like it's already done it? Mm, yeah. Like, where? Well, and... She Shall Fly was very, very good last start. If they're running on, I think it runs a hole if, if they overdo it. And then Ollie's got off Viridine to ride Miami, down, Miami Bounce. So Miami Bounce obviously going pretty good. Um, very oh, scary Bounce. race. You just can't bet. You just can't bet. Too big a race, I reckon, wouldn't it? It's not going to be suited over 1,200. You wouldn't think so, but would it surprise you if they went really quick and it was just really strong through the line? Yeah. It was very good at Bendigo first up last prep, I reckon it was. Or the prep before. Yeah, well, we we know one. Um, we know one bike found it, found it over uh, over the carnival. Yeah, we love Miami Bound and we love Damien. Uh, race number eight, boys, is called the PB Lawrence. PB Lawrence. That's what we we're talking about the whole day. That's what the day's named after. <laughs> the PB Lawrence stakes. So four hundred metres is a group two. Wait for age. Uh, some interesting ponies here. Boys, Jonathan, you want to kick us off, or Peter, do you want to start us off with a bit of a uh, Westy's best preview of Regal Power and Arcadia Queen? Good to see the the good filly back, the Velociraptor. Uh, there's a the main difference is prep though is in the trainer column for Arcadia Queen. There is a huge difference between Grant and Alana Williams training this horse and the uh, the bloody Volvo driver last prep um, who got the keys to to the Ferrari and didn't know what to do with it. Um, I think that's going to make a huge difference for this horse and it's in for a, an enormous preparation. Uh, it does have bar shoes on, which is a, is a concern, but the stable does have a good, pretty decent track record with bar shoes over in, in WA. But really, Arcadia Queen and Regal Power, they're not going to be tuned up to be running and winning first up 1,400. They might be able to do it off ability, but... I don't think the map is in their favour. Uh, again, we're sort of leaning towards on pace. If anything, will be more uh, prevalent than than being off speed. So as a result, I'm looking at horses like Streets of Avalon. Um, it should just lob in a perfect spot here. It's got a really good figure over 1,400 at Caulfield. Went well second up last prep. Ticks all those boxes. I thought Kings of Dream has trialled really well up in Sydney and should get itself into a nice spot. And again, I'd probably be just trying to catch it, did it on the su- drift It did late. suck us in last prep the same way Kings will dream. Yeah, I just think it's... Remember? Yeah, I, I think this is probably a little bit better. I went back and watched some of those trials going into its runs last prep. I think these might be a touch better. Um, and look, if they're... One, made... one thing I thought that I was very interested in what you said of Kings will dream, a theory I had was last prep, it trial good, and it was probably at its best first two or three runs, yep. that preparation. Maybe the stable sort of thought, Hang on, he's, he's not in for a long sustained prep this time. We had him humming early, tuning up a little bit more. He's drawn inside here for Walla. He could get every possible and be very, very good here. Yeah, I wanted him on my side. And look, if there's one horse, if they're making ground on the day, Cascadian went enormous first up last prep, um, just got knocked off by special reward. The trials have been, well, the trial it was in recently was pretty good. 
uh, I'll just be keeping watch on that with with the goat on board. So that that's the way I'm looking here. Arcadia Queen Regal Power. I'm sure the the connections there will just be wanting to see them go through the line. But the the lay for me in this race is Mystic Journey. I can't have that horse uh, at the current price given the the likely map. Um, I want to see the horse return to racing in good fashion before getting sucked into it at that price. So that's the way I'm looking for the PB Lawrence. Any thoughts on Aristia, Scooby's mad puller? <laughs> Not for me. Uh, look, my thoughts on the race, uh, anything with bar plates on, I just put a line through straight away. <laughs> so, well, yeah, it's just... They just don't seem winning bar plates. So whatever Arcadia, Arcadia Queen does, it's going to improve. Like if Arcadia, Arcadia Queen, like, you know, just goes through the line the next two starts and then third up, it's bar plates off. You, you know they're fair dinkum then. Because obviously the bar, bar plates mean they've got problems with their feet. They've got problems with their feet. They can't get the work into the horses, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But um, look, I'm, I think Mystic Journey is a forgotten horse. It's had a couple of trials. It's well in the market, but like it's, I think we discussed this a couple of weeks ago, Dicko. It's a difference between tipping a horse and backing it. I couldn't back it at the price because I wouldn't be surprised if it was winning. Streets of Avalon gets a gets the peach run, and as I go back to over and over and over again, this thing is is deep in this race, and I back the horse at a P two. Great Western in a maiden over fourteen or sixteen hundred, and it's off the. I just can't, cannot get that out of my head. <laughs> it's won one point two million dollars, <clears throat> and when I found it, at, you know, three dollars fifty in a nine thousand dollar maiden, it, at on a public holiday in in the Wimmera, it got beat. It's just it's beyond my. It blows my mind. <laughs> uh, I, I I thought. Uh, it's a bit like the previous race. It's, it's too hard to sort of guess at. Uh, we'll have a good read of Nick Noon's trial reports. I've watched a bunch of them. Uh, I agree that Kings will dream sort of... It sort of interests me a little bit, but not enough. Not at the price. I think Streets of Avalon and also Coney each way are the two of the safer bets here. They've both put themselves in the race, but I don't think you have to bet now. Neither of them's going to go overly go off, and you can wait till sort of race four or five and go, yeah, it is on pace. And that can give you that final tick to to want to back Sir Coney or Streets of Avalon. Other than that, this is essentially a pipe opener for the better races, um, for some of the better horses in Australia. In race seven, I had no interest in this race at all. That was just a watch race for me. In race eight, obviously a very tough race, main race of the day. But I was keen to have a small each way play on race on number six, Sir Coney for Nick Ryan. The horse is airborne at the moment, race fit, and with a lot of horses obviously resuming, this horse will be on speed. And I just thought at $23 and $6 on speed, hopefully kick clear and it'll give him something to catch. So I thought that was a good play, Sacconi. And in race nine, that was another watch race for me. No real interest in that race at all. Race nine, lucky last, last leg of the quaddy, and after a Four group races in a row, I believe. We have been hit with a benchmark 80 or something. Benchmark 84. I don't know why they do this, but they love doing it. Um, Big field, big map, scary map, hard to map. Uh, Dominant, dominant favourite who's drawn barrier nine, Willie Pike, Pike in the last god. I wonder who will talk about that heaps, just for everyone. Um, He's drawn nine. What's where do you map this horse, Peter? I've got him sort of just midfield, but like probably a little bit worse. It's just a lot of sort of slow horses early here, um, and he's got he's drawn inside of them. Yeah, it's it's got tactical speed. He can put this first four, first six if he wants. It, it it's only raced forty days ago, so it should have a real strong fitness edge. Um, I don't think they'd be sending it first of all over east. Um, when they had Group 1 features back in WA at its absolute mercy. This is a proper WA horse. It's complete nutter. Um, one out in the quaddy. You go, <laughs> it's a banker for every multi you want to have. And you'll have, if you like anything else on the card, you just truckload it into this. You'll have it going for however many thousand in the last. You can then decide to hedge when it goes into a $1.50. 
there's no other way to play it. Who's, I mean, there's, there's no other genuine horse in this race that can compete with this horse if it gets into a lovely spot. Only horrendous bad luck or injury stops it from winning. <laughs> yes! I've, I've been doing these shows to Peter and talking to Peter about ponies for three or four, five, six years. I've never heard this. I don't, I don't want to say anything more. I don't think we need to... Got to lie. 50, first up from the West. Jeez, got to lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's have a case. Let's have some kind of bet on it. Oh, who am I betting with? Peter. What, 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 he's, already, he's already probably got a spot on the boat, though, because obviously... For the chartered, for the chartered fishing trip, yeah, I guess to bring a friend. This Peter's my friend, and I like him. That's <laughs> you know, in a spot. Well, then hey, I'm going to bring uh, someone else in as well. Cool. Look, look, the thing is with this, I just looking at a dollar fifty. It's just not in my genetic makeup to even think about backing anything at a dollar fifty sort of thing, especially what the horse that does get back back in the run. What about the um, the real sleeping giant with the apprentice riding Uncle Lindsay's horse, Adelaide A? Wouldn't think it would be ready first up, 14. Um, and it will be behind showmanship, you'd think, with uh, with showmanship drawn gate nine and Adelaide Ace out in 11. Um, it's Adelaide, Ace, Adelaide Ace is a horse that they wrote... Well, the change of tactics, this thing's immune from it. Yeah. Because it rolled forward and sat outside the lead, I think, with microphone, maybe. Um, well, that's what I mean. Microphone's gone to stud. And if microphone and showmanship were in the same race, I'd, I'd, I'd dare say microphone would start shorter. So I just, Adelaide Ace has had a, a jump out. I don't think it's all, yeah. The dollar fifty. Like, no, I wouldn't be giving $2.60 about showmanship, but. Tomato sauce, I'm weary for mine. Oh, I thought the, the roughie in the race was number 16. So you swing. No no jockey, though, so I think they'll scratch. But I believe even O'Torto's got a bit of ability too, I reckon. And often backed. So like it has got ability. So interesting race. Can't wait to see how these West Aussies go. Boys, best value and a lay. Right. I'll go first because it's easy for me. Um, my my best is rulership. Rulership, I think, three dollars ten is good odds. I thought it should be favourite. The if if showmanship's a dollar fifty, I'll I'll be forced to lay it. Yeah, but it's a dollar seventy five right now. You're laying it? Is it your yeah, lay? Dollar seventy five. I'd have to get something out of sort of thing for sure. Now it's a very hard day for me to find in each way on Saturday. So I was actually going to go to G Long tomorrow. Ooh! <laughs> Still a bit of work here, punters. And I was, I was going to back uh, G Long Race 6 Horse 2 Lord of Darkness each way in the distance race. Repeat that just once more because people are still scrambling to get their pens. G Long Race 2 Horse Sorry, Geelong Race 6 Horse to Lord of Darkness. Over who, in the who trains and rides? Uh, Paul Pruska trains in the uh, Surprise Baby Colours. Dean Holland on the board. Yeah, it's 5.50 with all the plastics at the moment. All right, my best, Race 5, Number 5, Ranting. My value is Race 8, Number 3, Streets of Avalon. Each way, if you want. And oh, I would have laid... I would have laid. My out wide bet this weekend is at Randwick Race 5, number one, Raheen House. This horse is first up, short of its best distance, but it is working super at home. I spoke to the Lees camp this morning and they thought at the $9 with three runners in the race, this was probably the one to have a bet on. So we'll go with Raheen House each way, Randwick Race 5, number one. My best bet of the day comes at Caulfield, race five, number three, rulership. And also in race six, I thought fresh was an each way special. So they were my two from Caulfield, race five, rulership, and race six, fresh, each way. Cheers, thank you. Uh, I'll lay Hydro Star. Hey, I don't like Hydro Star at all. Race five, number six, Hydro Star. I don't know why or how it's so short. There's horses, it, there's... Three, there's two horses in this race that have got eight lengths on it as it, as it is. 
I know it's one from one, but it was a pretty weak, soft, shitty Sandown meeting that it won at. This is a big step up to horses that compete at the highest level as two-year-olds. There's only one market for Belmont at the moment. There's only one race where there's a market, which is just hilarious behaviour. I'm not sure when corporates are going to catch up with WA, but it's probably because there's no minimum bet laws there still. So it's a, just a cast state in terms of betting. Um, you think, you think, given that the industry everywhere is funded by wagering, that if you ran WA racing, you'd encourage them to put up odds so that people well, therefore bet upon them. Yeah. But if I if I was a a corporate bookmaker, they'd be the first join to go up on WA because you. All the smarties come and truck load in. You go, no, nah, to win 20 bucks, why not? <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> they put the odds up, put the feelers out. You don't, you don't even need. You just put them all up and then just go, oh, yeah, no. Nah, and then you, can, you, work, you work the market out. It'd be cheaper to work the market out. That way, just don't let anyone on and just see the bets coming in from the smarties. Like, you'd reckon they'd be up first. You think so. You think so. Uh, before you finish, Pete, just we'll get this viewer question out of the way. It might be... Uh, Walshie's burner account, I'm still not sure but question number one, have you tried the mozzarella zinger and if so how bad was the diarrhea out of ten? Oh, Walshie, I, I, are you a KFC man? Oh yeah, I, I like it it's only, it's only <laughs> oh, but I haven't yeah. been I, I usually just go there and order as many bits of chicken as I can <laughs> except I don't like the um, I don't like the breast bits because it's dry and the wing bits you don't get as much meat the thigh bits are me pick at the, uh, the KFC <laughs> <laughs> any, any, any other tips for anyone going to KFC, mate? Hey, pardon? Any other tips for anyone at KFC? Off at yeah, Tuesday, nine for nine ninety five. You still get nine pieces. For <laughs> that was the day. And you go up there and you ask for the nine bits and you go, I want, you know, three drumsticks, three thighs and, you know, three rib bits or something. And I'll give it to you if you get there at the right time. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you all read that question. What's the next one? What's the next one? <laughs> Number two, can you show us an example of how to form on a race? Uh, Joe, Jared, I've actually done this for Betfair and punting form. Um, I believe it's in the pipes. And, you know, once they sort of, done enough editing or whatever, it'll be out there for everyone to see. Um, that That is happening. Uh, any first season's affordable size you guys like? You two are a bit more of a breeding operation than I am. I couldn't care less. I had, a, I had a quick look at this after that question, and I thought, why the hell would you go to a first season sire when, um, oh, obviously, Darcy's playing up here, so Dicko's left the screen. Um I looked it up and it was astounded that um, Ballas Free is seven thousand seven hundred a third. Well, for that price, that'd be my pick for under ten grand for a side. Peter, anything? No. <laughs> cool. Uh, the last question we won't read out, but I will be in touch with you, Jared. Uh, Peter, best bets, values, and lace. Um, I've only got a value at this stage because I don't know what any of these others are going up. So uh, as someone said, can they get more out of just click the link? Well, you actually have to because I'm not throwing things out before a market goes up. That sounds like sort of, you know, nonny professional behaviour to me. Um, race seven, free trade's gone up very, very short there at Belmont. I'm happy to be with Pims Royale. It's drawn outstanding. Uh, it was a huge run last start. Pims Royale for me at the price might even get a little bit better on the day. All right, anything else we should discuss before we uh, wrap this one up, boys? <laughs> we just hope we can get back on course in early 2021. Yeah. When are you tipping? I've just got a feeling it'll be Australia Day or something like that. I reckon they'll be stage four, go to stage three, and then they'll let us have 20 people or something for Christmas. And then after that, you know, the next big weekend will be the ah. public holidays. So they open that up. They'll open the lot up. Uh, be interesting to see what goes on with um, cricket, cricket, like local cricket as well. Ah. Yeah. There's a lot of water to go under the bridge and uh, let's just hope the case numbers continue to drop. 
That's it. All right, guys, that's been the mailbag for another week. Brought to you by ponyform.com.au and betfair.com.au. Hydrate by goat, lager, brewed with the pure, natural, organic waters of the Yarra River there right in Richmond. Uh, we've got a stack of products. The team is flying. We've never been going better. Curly doesn't stop winning. Pete is fine at $30 winners. I'm back. Nick Noonan's airborne, and we've got some big news for you on the deep dive on Monday. Make sure you don't miss it. Good luck on the weekend. Bye-bye.